Hello, my beautiful Moglets. So, we have a very big, juicy patch note for you today. Uh, also, there is a new hero, which we'll have to go over to Epic Seven's YouTube channel to check out. Before we get started, I do want to mention that I'm going to be trying to premiere this. It's one of YouTube's somewhat recent features. It's kind of like a live stream, but obviously you're seeing a pre-recorded, pre-edited video. But you can chat as if it was live. But I'll be there reading chat, maybe answering questions, if, if I can. Let's start with the patch note. It's pretty huge. We have the Expedition update. A lot of people were talking about this uh, in a couple of my live streams. I was kind of confused about what they were talking about. Apparently I haven't been keeping up as well as I should have, but here it is in the official patch note. Expedition update. From what I read about it in the patch note, it's kind of like a co-op hunt to make things simple. Uh, you can get these posters from Hunt, and these are kind of like your entry tickets into this content, and then you could take guild members or friends along with you for like a co-op Hunt battle. You do have to clear Hunt 8 at least first before you can even try. So yeah, Lobby Dude Garo will have a new icon if you have some wanted posters, and you can go there directly like that. Or you can go into the Hunt menu and get them from there. It says Expedition will be held on a monthly basis, so I guess that means it's gonna have a sort of reset and there will be calculations and stuff. So yeah, Hunt 8 or above, and you can farm these wanted posters up to 5 Five of them you can't actually hold more than that. So yeah, once you create the expedition you can invite guild members or friends. You can also be invited to certain expeditions. 20 invites per boss. There are three boss so you can I guess have up to 60 and there can be up to six people in expedition. That is a lot. They must be really hard. Also it says here better rewards are available when the boss is defeated within 29 minutes so Firstly, 29 minutes seems like a long time for a boss, but I guess it's going to be a pretty big thing. And you can see a couple of rewards down there. Looks like uh, equipment reforging materials, but I don't think they show the rest of the rewards here. So you can do the same expedition three times per day. Oh, and unlike every other content, energy will be consumed when you enter the expedition. It will not be reimbursed if you are defeated or if you leave the expedition. Uh, yeah, I think because you get rewards regardless, just based on how much damage you deal. I guess it's kind of like a world boss. I mean, there are six people there, so... So whether you win or lose, you will be able to receive rewards within 24 hours. Unclaimed expeditions will disappear after a certain time. So you get gold just for participating, reforging materials, and boss points. Okay, and you can earn quote-unquote rewards from the exposition depot, depending on how many boss points you got. Oh, eliminate the boss within 30 minutes of creating it. Okay, so like you would need your friends or guild members ready to rumble like before you create it and you'll obtain one additional reforging material. I don't know if they mean one one extra type or literally one because I don't know if that time stress is worth one <laughs> one reforging material. And if you lose, you'll just get gold and reforging material. No manifestation stone or boss points. <laughs> is that literally two? Two reforging materials? What, what's the point? Hopefully you can do something special with those uh, points. Okay, here's what you can do with the points. Yeah, you know, a lot of uh, equipment enhancing stuff. 50 of those. Doesn't look too bad. I see some more stuff back there as well. Yeah, I mean, looks like it'll be some pretty fun PvE content. Co-op PvE. I'm looking forward to giving it a try, sure. They also say here, expedition bosses will be replaced in a rotation one at a time in the future. Depending on the boss rotation, difficulty level, drop rewards, and expedition depot rewards may be changed or added. Then we got zone 5 of normal labyrinth. Can pick up some gear here. Looks like a crit chance, crit damage set. Uh, looks pretty good. I mean, everything has health on it but that's typical. Everything has crit chance and crit damage on it. It'll all depend on how it rolls, but definitely some high potential here. Obviously not as high as hunt gear, because you can I-90 it now, but still high. We also got two new exclusive equipments. I already read through these. None of them seemed particularly good or interesting, I should say, especially because these are two units that aren't like super meta, I would say, Kaurik and Ravi. I really like Ravi, I don't use her very often anymore though, but honestly hers do not sound all that good, to be totally honest, 40% chance to dispel one debuff from her when using Slaughter. Like it'd probably be okay if it was 100% chance, just 40, doesn't seem like, why though, 40. Pretty low chance for one burn for two turns, and then stun chance by 10% when using her ult. But of course, for those that are already using Ravi to a good degree, then it's just, you know, a small little buff. You also get that 7 to 14% attack. So, you know, just a nice little thing there. Then we got Kaurix, Dimensional Corridor. He'll increase his attack for two turns. Guess it can be good if you don't have an attack buffer on your team. Decrease hit chance for one turn when using Dimensional Explosion and 20% damage boost for Dimensional Explosion. Again, they're like, okay, nothing special though, nothing worth talking about. Then we got a new side story, Seaside Showdown. It looks like the same thing they did with, uh, was that Cigarette? Cigarette side story. 
I like this. It's pretty simple, you know, not too much story going on there. And little missions to do. I like those. Got an Aura drop rate, a Ravi drop rate. World Arena will be ending. I think tomorrow actually. One thing I was wondering is that uh, do people who are in Master just get the skin and no conquest points? That seems kind of weird to me. Like I mean technically mechanically speaking even a thousand conquest points is better than a skin because you can actually do something with the conquest points. I mean you can look at the skin. You know it's a very nice skin. I hope I don't decay because I really do want it. A new function will be added where the pre-ban tier will be shown on the screen after being banned. So no more double bans, hopefully. Or would that be too late? I'm not sure if that's just more for clarification or like we'll see them before week. So it would be like someone has to do the ban first then, right? But whatever, we'll see. Then we also have blind day for champion five and above. Apparently there'll be a window on the weekend where the details of your opponent in arena will be hidden. Nickname, account rank, victory points. I'm not sure what the point of this is. Oh, okay. So yeah, I didn't really notice that this was right before reset happens. So I guess people can't like look at who they're really close to and like know what team they're. I don't know, man. That's kind of weird. I mean, I'm not in champion, so it doesn't even affect me, but hopefully it's some quality of life for you guys up there. Yeah, so I guess it's to prevent like the targeting of someone, you know, most of their personal details will be gone. I think even the way these units are displayed in their orders will be changed, but like the defensive positions won't be. They're also going to limit us to 30 refreshes per day. While this would have been annoying when I was climbing to champion, because I'm pretty sure like at that last day there, I, I was getting so fed up with just seeing the same teams over and over and I just refresh until there was like someone that wasn't cancer that popped up, you know? So I'm sure I refreshed probably like 80 times during that one day, so that would have been annoying for me. Well, I mean, it will be annoying for me when I'm going to try and climb again. Oh, you will still be able to use free refreshes, so I guess you're just gonna have to be more patient. Oh, also it seems like this uh, total ranking section will be kind of blind as well, so you can't be like sniping someone. Even though I guess, I mean, there is still kind of enough information there, probably. I feel like I actually shouldn't be talking too much about Arena. I don't keep up with it at all, so I'm, I might just be completely wrong with everything here. <laughs> but that's the only reason I can really see, like, why they would do that. They're also changing something here with points, but again, this is something I don't really understand. Especially this negative 200 plus, negative 160 to 199, I don't know what this reference is really. It says champion to legend here, but like, but it seems like they're gonna be more forgiving on losses. You know, in champion, you're gonna be winning 10 and losing 10. Legend is the same story. App icon is getting changed to CDOM instead of Angelica. It's been Angelica since like the beginning, I think. Back to this splash screen again, that's cool. I like this one, except for, uh, is that normal lots? His, his tongue looks weird. That's about the only thing. Oh, we can transmit limited heroes now from events. That's cool, because I don't need like some of those souls I got. I like specifically avoided getting them because I knew I couldn't do anything with them. So I actually might not even have any, but you know. For those that did get them, the remaining heroes can be transmitted if one of the heroes has been imprinted. Okay, yeah, if one of them has been imprinted to Triple S. Couple of description changes here, nothing super important sounding. Same story here, another little UI change. Ah, you can disable the screen touch visual effect. I think it's pretty nice. And a lot of other seemingly small things here, it's just a giant wall of text. Feel free to read it if you want. I'm not super interested, it's all very small looking things. But yeah, that was pretty much it for the patch note. I actually don't think there was a ton except for like expedition you know some exclusive equipment uh, expedition seems like the biggest thing though some new exclusive equipment new labyrinth stuff there but yeah expedition is the big thing looking forward to trying that out but now we got to go over to youtube right on my front page anyway let's go ahead and give this a watch Enough. check that skill animation it's time to behave. Uh, what the hell was that? Oh damn, she's really cute though. I I, I want to see that animation again. That, that was that looks kind of weird. It's time to so she's like a a circus clown. What were all those things that gathered on top of that that enemy? Were those like monsters? They look like like they are in the game though. I don't know. <laughs> It's nice, and well, I really like her design. I'm not sure about that animation, to be totally honest, but her design, I really like. She's like a circus. Mui. 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 Yeah, I think Mui. So there was some talk about her lines. If you want to check it out, I'm sure it's like the next video coming up 
on the sidebar, so <laughs> just, I'm not even gonna bother linking it. Circus trainer. All right, that's cool and everything. Let's check out her uh, stats and all that. Uh, attack 1039 health. Ooh, fast. A warrior. She's a fast warrior. 27 crit chance. Always like to see that. Yeah, I mean stats are never crazy. Yeah, higher speed among warriors. Increases the utility of her skill one because of the dual attack with concentration. Well, I guess we're starting with her skill three. Grand finale drives monsters forward to attack all enemies, dispelling two buffs. Grants increases attack to all allies for three turns. I actually really, really like this because she seems like she'll be able to do some some solid damage and she'll be a support. Dispelling buffs and increasing attack to everyone for three turns. And she is so fast as well. I'm already thinking maybe like paired with Seedom, you know, because Seedom gets that combat readiness when someone else crits. You know, build her with 100 crit chance, dispelling those buffs. I would hope like with all other heroes in the meantime, she dispels those two buffs before attacking. Uh, even though it, she doesn't do any debuffs herself, it seems, you know, good against Zerato as well, I guess, in that case. And of course, no combat readiness manipulation herself. <laughs> Five Tunras, I just saw that. But it can chain into others with combat readiness, like Seedom from that AoE attack. And then she gives combat readiness, so you could have a slightly slower, you know, whatever. But let's keep going. I like this skill. Well, let's see here. It looks like she removes the buff after her, her attack finishes though. Yeah, you can see her attack is being absorbed by the barriers. And then, yeah, okay. That's unfortunate. So punishment is another AoE. 35% chance each to inflict two bleeding effects and 65 stun. Does that go up to 80% stun with that 5 and 10? Or is that with that already? I don't know. Ah oh, yeah, 50% chance to inflict two bleeding. And I guess 80% for one turn stun. Alright, yeah, that's actually pretty damn good. Ah, here's the soul burn effect for skill one. Attacks with the whip, 65% chance to inflict a random debuff. Ah, oh, for one turn. Random debuff, silence, decreased defense, decreased attack, or unhealable. Soul burn makes that 100% effect chance and random debuff for two turns. Eh, I mean, they're all good debuffs except unhealable. Well, no, that's not true. Unhealable can definitely come in clutch. Like I was fighting a Corvus the other day, and if he didn't have unhealable on him, which I got sort of somewhat randomly, I think it was uh, SSB's return with Zerato, then uh, we probably would have lost that one. So uh, unhealable, I take that back. It's not useless, but it's kind of niche. But all these other ones are useful in pretty much every other situation. But yeah, it's the random nature of it. If she was water, she'd be amazing for Wyvern though, I would say. Got the attack buff, random debuffs every turn. 65% chance anyway, 75% ah, chance. We also have our artifact, Circus Fantasia. Caster's effectiveness by 50% at the start of the battle. Effect decreases by 5% every time the caster attacks down to 25%. Eh. I mean, 50% effectiveness is a lot of effectiveness, and she needs effectiveness, a lot of it, to remove the buffs with her ult, 80% AoE stun, and what was it, 60% bleed, and then of course her basic. Problem is, that is at max level, and I don't think this is an artifact worth trying to get 6 of, and or using those uh, potion potion things to get it to max. So, more than likely you'll be at around 35%, down to 15, 20, whatever. And at that point, I'm not too sure. There are a lot of good warrior artifacts. But yeah, I mean, all in all, that S2 definitely does sound good. Kind of like a little uh, ML Aura. I always like me some attack buffs, some AOE damage. Yeah, so I guess she's just like mostly CC, which I guess since she can remove buffs is fine, even in this like immunity riddled meta. It's just that in most cases, she can't do her second skill till after she does her third skill, unless you also have someone like Bazaar with you. But, I don't know, having them both together seems kind of a waste, because Bazaar will also remove buffs, you know? And push their combat readiness back, and make them unable to be buffed and unhealable, all with one skill. Yeah, she kind of pales in comparison there, but she does have much faster base speed, so there's always that. Like I said, pairing her with Seedon might be pretty cool. I don't know, I don't know, I'm rambling way too much now, and this is actually paired in with this that long-ass patch note, so I'm probably going to wrap it up here. Make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below, dropping a like on this video if you haven't enjoyed, it's always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time...